I love weather. Atlanta's chief meteorologist, Glenn Burns. The dolphin of the wild here. And committed to getting the forecast right. You have debris. Um, we've had some damage. We've had some damage now. We just hope people are okay. Leading Severe Weather Team 2 is a privilege and a responsibility. And keeping you safe. And he was uh, just kept going on about how close it was getting to us, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's coming straight for us. People trust him, and he has saved countless lives. Embraced by Georgians for four decades. Well, I just love him. Again, it's a privilege to be in everybody's home every day. The story behind the man you see on TV. And he is a remarkable person. The experiences he'll never forget. Makes me tear up to this day. And the reunion that lit up a room. So Glenn, we've got a special surprise for you. Oh my God, oh my God. Tonight, we're celebrating Glenn Burns, 40 years. Good evening, and thanks for being with us for this celebration of Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns and his 40 years here at WSB-TV. So over the next hour, you'll hear from Glenn's friends, his colleagues, family, and viewers about what makes him so special. Yeah, and now as he prepares to retire, we begin with the story behind this broadcasting legend. Okay, Rome, a batch of heavy rain is moving. Snow, sleet, and rain. Very powerful thunderstorms right here. Warming up to maybe freezing at 32 degrees. A Doppler can actually pick up a tornado spot, get right down on the ground and just bury yourself. You'd be trying to go into a brick wall there. The one thing that concerns me is the changing weather patterns. We've had some damage now. We just hope people are okay. I love weather. Glenn Burns' fascination with and respect for weather came as a teenager. And all of a sudden, a lightning bolt hit right next to me, blew me over with a shock wave, and my skin was tingling, I couldn't hear. From that moment on, he says he was determined to learn all he could about lightning and weather and to keep people safe. Even earlier than that, he developed a love for TV. I remember this like it was yesterday. Glenn's father was the program manager at a television station in South Florida, and young Glenn got to practice operating a camera. And I was sitting on that camera and I put the headphones on, and that really intrigued me. So TV had me hooked on from an early age. After college, Glenn got his first job at that same station as a reporter. During his first week on the job, another life-defining moment. This little kid came running into the lobby at the TV station. And he said, oh my God, my dad fell in the water because the station was right on the intercoastal waterway. In the dark of night, Glenn jumped in to save him. It was something, I remember that. That poor kid's eyes and his tears and his cries, I just, makes me tear up to this day. But we got him. And since then, Glenn's made a career dedicated to other safety. He transitioned from reporting to weather in West Palm. Nine out of 10 people who live here today don't know what a hurricane is or how to protect themselves and their property against these, the greatest storms on earth. And that is toward Minnesota. And I'll Worked in Minneapolis that. as a meteorologist. Then the start of his 40 year career at WSB TV. He and his family arrived during Snow Jam 82. And when I got off that plane and I saw what had happened and the hardships that the people were going through here in Atlanta, uh, the schools were shut down, people had to walk 10, 15 miles to get back to their homes. I said, this is never gonna happen again on my watch. About a year later, Glenn was promoted to Chief Meteorologist. This is a Channel 2 Action News Special Edition, Storm Watch 87. Let's check in with Glenn Burns in the Weather Center for an update, Glenn. Peter, uh, I think we are going to get a little bit more light snow tonight. And in fact, we're going to see a few snow flurries falling across Metro Atlanta. We've got a few showing up on radar right now. Then the blizzard of 93. It's going to be like throwing gasoline on a fire. This thing is going to explode. The storm of the century. Right now, let's go to the busiest man in Atlanta, Glenn Burns, who has been uh, in a sense, following the storm for five or six days, yeah. you, you predicted it, and it has roared in with an intensity that I didn't even, I couldn't even foresee anything like this. I mean, nobody can. I mean, just looking at Joyce Oscar was just like watching Joyce on the on the ice shelf at McMurdo Station, Antarctica. It's just that incredible out there. And I said, based on what I'm seeing here, I know the other stations are saying a couple of inches. I'm going, 
20, 30 inches of snow is not out of the question. We looked at the first computer guidance on this storm. And Glenn was right. He and Severe Weather Team 2 are committed to getting it right, and most importantly, keeping people safe. During the Atlanta Super Bowl ice storm in 2000, the 2008 downtown tornado, the 100-year flood in 2009, the Adairsville tornado, and of course, Snow Jam 2014. This is a two-part story, are going to be very cold with astounding winds coming in and incredibly cold wind chills. Leading Severe Weather Team 2 is a privilege and a responsibility. It's an expectation and a standard that Glenn expects of himself and a standard he expects of all of the meteorologists. Our job is to try and get it right. Oh, that's debris. When he gets on TV and severe weather situations, people trust him and he has saved countless lives. If Glenn tells you to take cover, if Glenn tells you where, where green meets red, get under the bed. During Georgia's most dangerous weather, Glenn always stays calm and it is intentional. We had the 2011 uh, tornadoes uh, that were horrible across the state. I can't even count the numbers that we had, but the preparation that we had in advance of that, we knew this was coming, really mitigated the loss of life in this, in this northern Georgia County area. I was scared, but I didn't want to portray that because when you portray that you're scared, everyone else is going to freak out, right? Glenn Burns is such a gifted communicator. Behind me, generating the equivalent of a Category 5 hurricane wind for the 150 miles per hour. And he has such a great way of taking this complicated scientific data and explaining it in a way that you and I can understand it. Glenn doesn't just track the weather from our studio. Tornado. He went out with storm tracers in Oklahoma. As you can see on the navigational chart, our aircraft... And flew into the eye of a hurricane, Hurricane Irene. If you look down below there, you can see just a frothing ocean. All while leading Severe Weather Team 2. 40 years at WSB, an incredible career. It was a privilege to be here for almost half of that and enjoyed working uh, side by side literally with Glenn for all those years. And, and I know he's got a lot of plans for the future, for retirement, and I'm excited for Glenn, his wife, and his family for all the things they're going to get to do now in the years ahead. Just watching the local knowledge of Glenn and being next to Glenn has just been an incredible thing over the years. There is nobody who knows the little towns, the little areas, the counties, the streets quite like Glenn. Watching Glenn do severe weather and knowing those neighborhoods, knowing those towns, and knowing where people live and being able to call out all of these familiar places to people uh, during severe weather when things are um, at their toughest weather-wise. Glenn comes in he could be off, he could be on vacation. If there's severe weather and he's able to come in, he comes right in and he's like, put me on. <laughs> so he is always prepared and always ready to cover anything that happens here in the Atlanta area. While Glenn has spent decades earning your trust, he's also earned the respect of colleagues working alongside John Pruitt, Monica Kaufman, and Chuck Dowdle. One of the great privileges of my career was working in studio with Glenn Burns. Now, the viewers see the professional, scientifically oriented, personable weathercaster. And working in studio with Glenn, we saw all of that too, but we also got to know Glenn as a person, as a man, a human being, and he is a remarkable person. Family man, totally devoted to his family, a kind man. Glenn has always been a teacher at heart. When he's up at that screen, and he's pointing out what's happening. He's not just telling you where it's coming from, he's telling you what caused it. So for me, he was kind of like Mr. Wonderful when it came to meteorology. He's serious, but he knows how to have fun. And I will tell you, I will miss him on the air because there's no one else like him. He knows his stuff. No telling how many lives he has saved in our community just because of his ability to forecast things and get people to safety in time. The thing that I always loved about Glenn and the, the reason I was so proud to work with him, not only just a great guy to be around, but the fact that he was so into what he does. And I think it shows on the air. We were just one happy family. And even though they've all retired, we are still one happy family. We are truly family.
We are. And he considers you part of his family as well. And while his top priority is keeping you safe, he manages to share his personality when we're in the clear. Now, you know our Glenn is a fisherman, and that report probably yeah. has him wanting to get his bait and get in the boat and head for it. <laughs> right, Glenn? They're no open a catfish what. farm, and uh, that'll solve everything. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I love to tell good jokes. He's always coming up with something to make us laugh. In fact, uh, I think we had a turkey wander across the street. <laughs> I cut that. All right. It is that personality, professionalism, and commitment to excellence. Check this out. that have led Georgians to welcome Glenn into their hearts and their homes. Go away, that's why you turn to Glenn. Oh, why does the rain... Because it's clear he cares about us all. He is a remarkable person. He takes the time to, to greet people, say hello, and make sure that you're okay. With the warnings expired, uh, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. I hope we served you and protected you well. You get invited into people's homes, and, and that trust is earned. And, and I don't take that for granted one second. I mean, that is an honor. <laughs> Still to come, the surprise that left Glenn smiling from ear to ear. So, Glenn, we've got a special surprise for you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Plus, you invite him into your homes. Now he's inviting you into his. An inside look at life with Glenn Burns and how he met the love of his life. But first... And it was him on there, Glenn Burns, saying, you know, take cover. Tornado victims who say Glenn and Severe Weather Team 2 saved their lives. One woman's incredible survival story. Next, when celebrating Glenn Burns' 40 years continues. Severe Weather Team 2 is on a mission to make sure Georgians are weather aware. And throughout the decade, storm survivors have expressed their gratitude to Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns and the team for literally saving their lives. Here now is one survivor's story. I really thought it was the end. It's a nightmare etched in Elizabeth Graves' mind. Yeah. The night a tornado <laughs> devastated Noonan in Coweta County. It was the most horrific sound I've ever heard my whole life. Graves' boyfriend, John, had gone to bed, but she stayed up watching Severe Weather Team 2 track the approaching storm. Glenn Burns kept saying, it's coming down Franklin Road, it's coming straight towards Noonan. Tracking this toward Noonan in about a minute from now. Glenn Burns kept going and going and going. Oh, this is really going strong here. We've been tracking this tornado on the ground. And he was uh, just kept going on about how close it was getting to us. And I thought, oh, my gosh, it's coming straight for us. Graves rushed to wake up her boyfriend and told him they needed to take cover. They got in their safe space while her phone was blowing up with weather app alerts. It kept making noises and stuff, and then I looked at it, and it was him on there, Glenn Burns, saying, take cover, it's coming up from Franklin Highway, and that's us. It, I knew it was going to get us. This is an EF4, EF5 for sure here. She, her boyfriend, and their miniature dachshund then rode out the storm. I asked God, please, I just kept saying, please, God, please, God, please, God. That's what I said over and over and over. I just... I thought about my daughter and my son. They all made it out alive, but their home was destroyed. It wasn't until later they would learn they survived a mile-wide tornado that hit Heard, Coweta, and Fayette counties, an EF4 tornado that was the strongest in our area in 10 years. My thoughts are, listen, listen and, and react now. Act now, don't wait. If they say take cover, then it's time to take cover. Being able to portray to the folks, you know, I'm concerned about it and I'm forecasting it and you're going to be okay because we're going to track this and we're going to let you know where it's going so you can take cover. I think really that, that helped the public really reduce a lot of life lost in that area. It's a reminder of the critical mission of Severe Weather Team 2 to keep people safe. It sends chills, actually. That was Glenn's reaction when we told him people credit him and Severe Weather Team 2 
with saving their lives. You are saving lives. I've been here 15 years, 15 years, and I cannot even count how many times I've heard, I turned on the TV and Glenn Burns was on the TV. And Glenn said, take cover now, and my life was saved. I mean, you are like a superhero. But you just do your best to stay focused and stay focused on your job and make sure people are aware. So again, it, it gets a privilege to be in everybody's home every day. Like us, so many of you consider Glenn part of the family. Hey, you invited him into your homes every evening, and that's been possible thanks to the support of Glenn's family. And his wonderful wife gave us some insight into life with Glenn Burns and what's ahead. So just a random kiss? Yeah. <laughs> he was handsome, first of all. And second of all, he was not um, boisterous. He was kind of calm and subdued. And um, I, we fell in love so fast that we were married within a couple of years. The love of my life, Susan, that I met in college that knew immediately that that was the one also from West Palm Beach. So everything just kind of fell in place. and. and there are no coincidences and just remarkable what happened. Glenn and his wife Susan met at the University of Florida. He was very shy, very shy when he was younger. And being the journalism major, I wrote for him. <laughs> so <laughs> he, um, but he really didn't want to be in front of the camera. He wanted to be a producer. And uh, his professor said, no, you belong right in front of that camera. Susan encouraged and supported Glenn to pursue an on-air career, and he got one, a reporting job in South Florida, transitioning to weather there. They don't even know what kind of destruction these storms can bring. And then moving to Minneapolis as a meteorologist. First, let's check the local weather conditions right here in the Twin Cities. Early in his career, life-changing additions to the family. It's just surreal. I had visions of having a, a, a baby and I knew what name that she was going to have all along. Mm -hmm. You named her. I named her Kimberly and uh, it was just amazing. Absolutely take your breath away. From the time I was a teenager I knew it, I, mean, I could see him. see my son, blonde, blue eyes, and his name was going to be Chris. And voila. Voila. The family then moved to Atlanta, 1982, and shortly after, Glenn became chief meteorologist at WSB, and there were sacrifices. We had a tornado go through our backyard. He was at work. The ice storms, of course, that paralyzed the city. But his job, his job was more important than us missing him. Being in this business is very tough on family life. You're working holidays, you're working nights. Uh, hi, honey, a tornado's coming. I'll see you later. Good luck with the kids. I had a wonderful childhood. I've met many talented, wonderful people, many memorable experiences. You know, he did work a lot, but when we were together, we spent quality time. From a very young age, I could see how much people meant to him. My dad was on the TV my entire life, so um, for me, it was always very normal. But we always had a really good time. Um, I can remember flying around in Chopper 2, going to the Braves playoff games, uh, the Atlanta Olympics, and countless other events. The family support has been overwhelming. Uh, my kids loved you know, what I did. They let me do what I did. You know, I missed the after school stuff a lot of times because I'm working the afternoon and nights and, you know. So that was kind of tough being away from that. But uh, they, they understood. They understood the responsibility. They understood the job. And uh, so I really thank my wife, Susan, and Kimberly and Christopher for the many, many years of enduring dad being away when it was critical that I'd be home. But Susan knows as well as anybody, it is life-saving work, and she knows how much Glenn truly cares. I think if people have watched him through the years, they'll realize that 
when things are wrong and people are hurting during these disasters, he kind of chokes up for a yeah, minute. Extreme wind. You know, it hits them right there in the heart. As far as life in the public eye. Well, everybody in Atlanta is so kind and thoughtful and, you know, they come up to us in public, even though being in the public eye is daunting, I will say. They come up and say, I appreciate your work. You know, you make me feel calm during storms. And we appreciate that. It makes it all worthwhile. They're just horses, they're just horses. In retirement, the couple's looking forward to spending more time with family, including granddaughter Ava. She's just an amazing granddaughter there as far as science goes. And then uh, all my kids and grandkids were did really well in school, so I was very happy. And they're Cocker Spaniels. Say your prayers. Say your prayers. Good girl. Come up here. Say your prayers. Good boy. What else is ahead? He's decided he wants to do the grocery shopping, which is perfectly fine with me, and that he's going to learn how to cook, which is perfectly fine with me. The ocean will become his playground once again, and we're going to travel. So we'll travel with our children and grandchildren not living here. We have the luxury of, of going when we want to. So um, just to see the world. He's earned it. He loves his family and the weather. He also loves space. Well, I was mesmerized. Glenn shares what fuels his passion for the space program and the exploration of things that are out of this world. Glenn Burns loves his family, mm -hmm. the weather, and fishing. Maybe fishing the most. <laughs> and if you've watched him over the years, you probably know he is also big on space. Yeah, that he is. Uh, we found out what drives his passion for things that are out of this world. Back in 1969, when I was a junior in high school, and uh, my folks turned on the TV and they said, you need to watch this. The Eagle has landed. Roger, tranquility. We copy you on the ground. And then all of a sudden, the man said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So that had me hooked. From then on, it was all systems go for Glenn Burns and his love of space. Well, I was mesmerized. I think because growing up in Florida, we could see the shuttles take off. And Glenn was able to pursue his passion thanks to his job as a reporter in Florida. This is the... Apollo rocket that went to the moon. Well, I reported a lot of that history for sure. Absolutely did. And <clears throat> gaining the trust of the astronauts, and, and they were a group that were very solid. They didn't really like outsiders. And they, didn't, they were kind of modest themselves, but uh, they were wild guys. Through his accurate reporting, Glenn gained their trust, eventually becoming close friends with astronauts, including Apollo 15's Al Warden. You know, when I was in West Palm, we were doing stories on all that. And we had two astronauts, Edgar Mitchell and, and Al Warden. Uh, Edgar Mitchell was Apollo 14, and Al was 15, and uh, did so many stories with them, we just got to be friends. Glenn even has these pictures taken by Warden from space hanging in his home. They just said that there's nothing that could ever describe adequately what it was like to be out in space and see the Earth from orbit. For WSB, Glenn reported live from Cape Canaveral for the final launch of the Space Shuttle Discovery in 2011. We had nearly a million people out here, spectators, journalists, dignitaries, all witnessing the farewell of our discovery. The skies parted, 1126, the shuttle lifted off. It was a dramatic launch uh, about 1126 this morning. I hope you all got to see it. It is a piece of American history. And as excited as Glenn is about space, over the decades, he has shared that passion with viewers through a special report on Halley's Comet. Halley's is an old comet born more than 3,000 years ago in a place out there about a trillion miles beyond the solar system. Live coverage from Charleston of the 2017 solar eclipse. Today's historic eclipse is something that they will never, ever forget. 
and coverage of NASA's moon rocket. I traveled to Huntsville, Alabama, where engineers test the rocket's components, including this 200-foot-tall fuel tank. Uh, yeah, I love space. There's no question about it. That's the future. They've worked alongside each other for nearly two decades. Now Glenn and meteorologist Brad Nitz are remembering Georgia's biggest weather moments. Plus, Brad's special surprise for Glenn. Next, when celebrating Glenn Burns' 40 years continues. Welcome back to Celebrating Glenn Burns' 40 Years. Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns and Severe Weather Team 2 are committed to keeping you safe. And throughout the decades, they've seen it all. For sure. Meteorologist Brad Nitt spoke with Glenn about some of their most memorable moments. Glenn, you and I have worked together side by side now for nearly two decades covering North Georgia's biggest storms. What are some that stick out to you in your mind? Well, you know, I, I love the big snowstorms. Everybody looks forward to that. But the one that I think uh, sticks out in my mind the most is the 2008 tornado that moved into the downtown Atlanta area, uh, EF2 on the uh, scale there, and it was just devastating. It was affecting a lot of people. One of the things I remember was the day after the downtown tornado, you and I covered that outbreak where there were multiple tornadoes. There was, remember, baseball size hail. Yes. So that large hail now moving through DeKalb and likely into Gwinnett counties here. And you and I were on the air, just the two of us, for seven and a half hours straight. Remember seven that? Seven and a half hours straight and, and uh, didn't miss a beat. Yep. Didn't miss a beat. This is a tornado, and you're seeing it live on our HD tower cam, but from the airport. You were looking north from the airport into the downtown Atlanta area. I uh, have a you know great admiration for this TV station, for the commitment that they have to weather here. I mean, they let us do our thing. They give us the best cracking equipment, uh, everything that we need to do the job. Well, and you were part of leading that charge, you know, getting the, the equipment and the tools here at the station for our team. I'm here in the heart of Georgia's Tornado Alley. This is Buckhannon in Harrelson County, the site of our new radar. And this is not just any ordinary radar. It's state-of-the-art technology, and it's just absolutely incredible. It's going to completely revolutionize the way we track and cover severe thunderstorms. The fact is that we have a radar and that is the biggest advantage we have. When we use, like, say, the National Weather Service radar, you know full well we have a little bit of a delay from what people see. And in just those few seconds, the damage that could occur where people weren't aware uh, is dramatic. So I convinced the TV station here at WSB that we need our own weather radar to get real-time, almost real-time weather data. So the, the radar, one of our primary tools, of course, for tracking severe weather, we have the, the 3D radar display, which has been a great tool for us. Yes. Uh, when we have the 3D radar, as you mentioned, we had the baseball size hail. So the, again, the radar was developed by a guy named Mike Gibson, and we got exclusive rights to that where we could actually look at a storm like a doctor we we'll be looking at an MRI, peer inside, look at, the, look at the components, find the hail, where is that hail falling, how large is that hail? Nobody else has that. We've also been able to detect lofted debris from a tornado on the ground. And right. when you and I are in the, you know, called the heat of the battle, when we're tracking a tornado on the ground, to be able to find lofted debris uh, gives us obviously high level confidence that the tornado is on the ground and that helps us with the warning messaging. Now is the time for you to seek shelter. It does. In fact, people can actually see this is coming to my neighborhood. I need to take action. I've got my kids. I've got my wife, my husband. We need to get down to a safe place immediately. And our viewers have learned to trust us with those uh, observations that we see in a thunderstorm when we see that loft of debris absolutely the fact that i get to work with you is actually a privilege as well because working together so long we know what each other thinks i don't have to say brad zoom down to this zoom down to that you're already on that and doing that before i even say it one of the things you probably won't say about yourself so i'll say it is after we've covered some of these tornadoes we have heard over the years several times where people have reached out and said you know i heard your warning 
I went to my basement, and if it wasn't for that, I may have been killed. My house was destroyed. We've heard that over and over. Dozens of times, and, and you know, when you're in the heat of the battle, like you say, we're tracking these storms. There has to be an era of compassion right. incorporated into that tracking as well. Uh, this is heading to your house. I know it's bad. Please take cover. Uh, we don't. We're not necessarily clinical in our coverage of tracking storms. Uh, we know people are involved in this, and we know these are our viewers, and we know they're in danger. And to be able to tell them to take safety, take cover, uh, is really so important here. I would go to my safe place right now. I got the warning from Channel 2, actually. I was using the app. Uh, I called her up, I was like, yo, we need to get in the bathroom now. We've heard time and time again, yeah, you saved our life. Yeah, you know, I, I think your, your point about, you know, it's not just data. It's important, and one of the things I think you do very well is keep in mind at all times that uh, this is not a, a radar display we're dealing with. These are people's homes, their lives. Somebody's on the receiving end of this. Yeah, the way I think about it is, my family's at home, I'm not there. What do they need to know to take cover? So that's my mentality. Uh, what, what folks need to know so they can take immediate action to save their, their, their friends and family. Up next, the surprise reunion that had Glenn in shock. So Glenn, we've got a special surprise for you. Oh my God, oh my God. When celebrating Glenn Burns 40 years continues. So Glenn, we've got a special surprise for you right now. Longtime Channel 2 meteorologist and our close personal friend, Karen Mitten is oh here. Karen, come on in. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great, sweetie. Oh, retirement is agreeing with you. You look amazing. Thank you. You look amazing. <laughs> Thank oh you my so God. Much. We have been in the heat of battle with this young woman again from time to time too. What a team we have, huh? Absolutely, a special team and my so good, good to buddy you. here too. I tell you what, I. Looking at you right now takes me way back. Me too. Way back. Back in the day. Back in the day. So when I first started, you'd already been here, and it was just the two of us. I remember very well, Karen. We covered many storms together. I'm sitting here thinking, and it takes me back. I was, what, 32 years old? I know, right? We were babies. We were babies. <laughs> we were really, really babies. And it was so, so long ago, but yet like yesterday, I will, I will never forget. When, when uh, they said that, uh, what do you think of this woman, Karen Minton? Should we hire her? <laughs> well, there was just no choice. I Aww. mean, absolutely, I mean, just amazing. You're absolutely incredible, Karen. People love you too, and you have that compassion that we were <laughs> just talking about. You know me. When I tell you something, I am not gonna pussyfoot around. I'm going to tell you like it is. So Karen, just a moment ago, Glenn and I were talking about some of the storms that we've covered together over the years. And the three of us covered many over many, the years. Many, many, many. And the two of you, for years before that, what are some that stick out in your mind? Well, Glenn, you know, back in the day before we had all the computer models that we have now and all the electronics and everything, my favorite storm and the one that just wore us all out was the blizzard of 93. Boom, oh, just blow up into a massive winter storm. It's a virtual blizzard. Oh my gosh, that was, uh, it took some convincing here for the station to actually realize the magnitude of the storm. Uh, when the management came to us and they said, well, what do you think? What do you, what do you think as far as snow goes? Well, I, I worked in Minneapolis for three years. I knew snow pretty well. I said, well, I think possibly up to 30 inches in spots. And they yeah. said, well, you can't go on the air and say that. We've never had oh, that yeah. before. Yeah. So uh, the blizzard of 93 was epic here, absolutely epic. And it's been wonderful to be on the team with you. You surprise the heck out of me, I will say that. The retirement uh, certainly agrees with you, Karen. Um, Open agrees with me. Yes, well, <laughs> yes, that always. was going to be my question. Karen, do yes. you have any words of wisdom, oh, advice, this is gonna be encouragement good. for Glenn? This is going to be good. Find joy every day. I do. Don't set an alarm clock. You won't need oh, one. That's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> you will be home whatever time you want to be home with your family. 
uh, and plan those vacations. You don't have to worry about, you know, in December, how we have to fill out all of our vacation schedules for the year. No more of that. You just pick the week you want off and go. And we have great confidence in this guy who's been here 17 years, knows Georgia weather. I uh, couldn't be prouder to hand it off to you. Well, I appreciate it very much. It's been, it's been a privilege to work with both of you over the years and, and you've been here over 40 years. I was here for almost half of that and it was, uh, it was just a, a joy and an honor to be part of the team. And I have to say that Glenn is passing the baton to a very, yes. very phenomenal people. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. And Absolutely. a dear, thank dear friend of mine. Both yes. of you are, so I'm thrilled for both. Congratulations. Thank you. You know what we need to do? What is that? Let's go have lunch. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Passing the torch, the foundation Glenn laid so Severe Weather Team 2 can continue to keep you safe. But first... He makes you feel like you're at home and he's one of the best storytellers. Self-proclaimed Glenn superfans talk about why they love him so much and why they've been watching him for decades. Now, for many of you folks, the love for Glenn Burns is a family affair. And it's been passed down, really, from generation to generation. For some of our viewers, that connection with Glenn is strong, and it spans decades. Well, I just love him. He's like a father figure to me. My grandmother, um, my grandparents would pick us up from school, and they would drive us back to their house, and she would always have on Channel 2 News, and it was always Glenn Burns, like, during the weather. That was our go-to. In my family, it was always seen as something as if Glenn Burns predicts the weather, that's what it is. And as long as Glenn Burns says it, that is what the weather is. These three kindergarten professionals at Hertz Ferry Elementary School in Fulton County love Glenn. I mean, they really love Glenn. I've got the autographed one right over there. Oh, at Glenn. And everybody's like, you literally have Glenn Burns picture yes, autographed does. over there. Yes, he sits with my family over there. Yes, he does. Sarah McKernan cherishes her autographed headshot of Glenn. She's been watching Glenn's forecast since she was a little girl. When she was teaching a unit on community helpers in her kindergarten class, she knew just who to turn to. We've had many people come in to give a real life experience of something that it is that they're learning, but he kept their attention the entire time, you know, talking about stories that he's done with his grandkids and having something for them to relate to, which was a big deal as well. He told them about yeah. why he wanted to, be, to become a meteorologist, and it was just like, he just had them engaged the entire time. They were just like captivated by him, kind of like, you know, how we are too. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't know how many pictures we took with him afterwards as well too. Oh, he took a lot. oh my gosh. Yvonne Gillen has been relying on Glenn since the big one. Well, my earliest memory is um, we had the big snowstorm of 93. We pretty much was watching him before um, it even came. For 40 years, Atlanta tuned in when the clouds rolled in. Who could forget Snowpocalypse? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. So we talk about snow apocalypse. Yeah, right? the snow apocalypse. When we all got stuck at the school. Yeah, so we got stuck at um, our old building where our school was. Um, originally, we got snowed in there. And so we're all tuning in to the weather to see what's going to happen and how long it's going to last. And, you know, thank goodness for, for Glenn. My gosh, that was scary. But the updates over and over and over again throughout the time, his dedication, you know, would make anybody feel, you know, just at peace when something crazy is happening. I remember one night, and Glenn was doing one of those late nights. It was like 2 a.m., doing one of those late nights. And I mean, I got my son out of bed because, I mean, he was saying, like, this is where it's coming. If you live in this area, which we did, he's like, you need to, you know, get down to your shelter. And so I got my son out of bed, and we took shelter, and it's because we tuned in. I was watching that night, too, and it was pretty bad. The sirens were going off in Cobb, and we yeah. were like, okay, let's see what Glenn Burns says. Glenn Burns said, take shelter. They so we did. Each other. <laughs> if Glenn Burns says it, then it's the truth. I know. I know. <laughs> Oh, there also is a Glenn Burns fan club, but I don't belong to that because I like to do... Why aren't you part of it? I like to do the original. Melanie Hagawood has been watching Glenn since he started at WSB. Now she follows him on social media. 
Just there's so much bad news. And most days the weather is fairly good news. But when I started following him on Facebook, I could really see more of his personality. And I love that his, he's positive. And I think we all need that. And things I would never know about if I didn't follow him on Facebook, like um, there's a pink lake in Australia. I'm not a super fan on there, I don't know why but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is his platform of choice. Glenn has a passion for sharing knowledge and he loves a good pun. I always like to put something like a pun or, or, or a fun story or, or a good joke on there. So I like people to laugh, you know? And, and I laugh at myself too at sometimes. I love that. I find myself scrolling, like when I need a little break from my job, I'll go in there. And I, I just, there are a lot of negative things on social media, but his is, I would highly recommend. I follow him on social media as well too because I love his sense of humor. Yes. He's always got something I on agree. there that is hysterical. I actually sent her the picture he had posted of him with the long hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was awesome. The weather updates, but also the memes. Yeah, it's <laughs> hysterical. Um, we all feel a little fragile these days. And so having that constant is just very reassuring. Glenn Burns is passionate about teaching and mentoring. And that includes his leadership of Severe Weather Team, too. Yeah, he has worked closely with the team so they can continue the legacy. I'm, I'm very sad and very joyful at the same time that, that I'm retiring, but I couldn't be happier having the team that we have in place that will take over. I mean, meteorologist Brad Nitz is absolutely superb, and he's the right guy for this job right now. Chief Meteorologist Glenn Burns is talking about passing the torch. Meteorologist Brad Nitz is going to be the new chief. Couldn't be any better. He's got a good view of all of northern Georgia. He knows the topography, which is a big impact on weather here uh, across northern Georgia. You have the mountains, which uh, can be really difficult to forecast, especially when it comes to snow. So all these little nuances Brad really understands. I, I really enjoy working with him on a daily basis. And they've been working side by side for more than 17 years, keeping Georgians safe during our most dangerous weather. Brad would be driving the radar. I would be in front of the green screen. I would be uh, looking at the storms as Brad is looking for the storms. And Brad is analyzing as he's running the radar. So it's, it's a juggling act. You're looking at the radar. You're finding the storms. In the storms, where's the rain? Where's the hail? alongside all the members of Severe Weather Team 2. When we track severe storms, we're just a machine. When we're forecasting, we're all getting different kinds of inputs. Brad will see something that maybe I didn't see. I see something that Brad didn't see. Brian may jump in with something else, Ebony. So again, everybody is a contributor. We all work together. I have the final say, but we all work together to get that final product out. And uh, it is just an absolute privilege to work with these consummate professionals. Glenn credits Brad Nitz with being instrumental in making sure WSB has the best technology, anything necessary to help track the weather to keep viewers safe, including 3D radar, which is like an MRI allowing the team to see inside of a storm. And Nitz is a master of the technology. There is nobody that is more serious about improving what we do each and every day than Brad Nitz. He is a master when it, when it comes to covering severe weather. Um, he is a master when it comes to knowing the ins and outs of Storm Tracker 2 HD. I love working with Brad Nitz. Of course, I used to watch him as well. So now being a part of his team is great. He's a great leader. He's a great um, person to work with because of his work ethic. He works really hard. Nitz is clear about his mission as the new chief meteorologist, getting the forecast right and protecting Georgians. When those winds are bearing down and when your roof is about to rattle off, what a couple of minutes might mean to you and to your family, it matters. And Brad understands the equipment. He understands how we need to be responsible stewards of that equipment and of the forecast that we present. He's got the smarts, he's got the intelligence, and he's got the dedication. And this job is not for the, for the weak in any way, shape, or form. You give up holidays, you give up weekends, you give countless hours of not only training, but executing in times when the community needs you, and you have to be a perfectionist. 
earning the respect of Severe Weather Team 2 and WSB. Brad's always learning, always trying to expand his knowledge, always communicating with all of us, um, and we're all better for working alongside Brad. Another beautiful fall day tomorrow. We'll pick up a few classes. Brad's simply the best. When he gets on there, Brad can talk about anything. He can put you in the right situation, and he makes you feel good about it. I think uh, we are in amazing hands with the man that is Brad Nitz because he is so steady and calm and smooth, and I think it's going to be a perfect transition. So when you're looking at how do you replace a Glenn Burns, you find someone who's a geek, someone who is as passionate as Brad is, someone who is as knowledgeable as Glenn is, and somebody who is credentialed the way Brad is. Difficult to transition from somebody who is a 40-year legendary meteorologist like Glenn, but we are in very, very good hands with Brad. Thank you so much for joining us this evening to celebrate 40 years of Glenn Burns here at WSB. That's right. We invite you to stay with us in the month ahead as we continue to take a look back at Glenn's amazing career and what's ahead. And as we leave you tonight, a special message from Glenn to you, the viewers. I, I want to tell you that, that I never took it for granted that you uh, tuned in every night to watch the weather. Uh, I tried to earn that every single day. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you've made Channel 2 Action News and Severe Weather Team 2 number one uh, in this city, and, and, I, and I'll never take that for granted. It's just overwhelming, and, and if I talk anymore, I'm going to start to tear up. But thank you for, for, for letting me into your home every night.